Hi, and welcome to the Liquid Notes tutorial series. In this tutorial, we will explore the exciting possibilities of changing harmonies with liquid notes. Now, let's imagine we're working on a short piece of film music. So far, we're happy with the composition, but we feel that the harmonies could use some enhancing. Let's spice it up. This is the piece. And now that's a piece Spielberg would like. Cool. Let's see what Liquid Notes can do. Let's select all the tracks and export it as a MIDI file. Then we save the file to the project folder. Now we open up Liquid Notes and import the MIDI file. What you see is the song, analyzed by the Recompose Harmony server. Here are the chords and their musical functionality, tonic, dominant, and subdominant. Each bar has one or more sliders depending on how many chord changes it has. The space bar starts and stops the song. If we check the logic window, we can see that Liquid Notes is using the same instruments we used in the sequencer, but is not playing the piece. All the alterations happen in Liquid Notes. We will export the MIDI file back to logic after we made our changes. To alter our piece, the only thing we have to do is slide the slider up or down. Based on the initial structure of the piece, Liquid Notes helps you to choose between chords that make sense. Liquid Notes gives you the musical vocabulary a great composer would use. Moving the slider up will make the chord sequence less conventional. Check it out. Sliding it back down will make it more conventional. Let's change the second chord, the A chord, to a D. Did you see what happened here? The slider of the following chord jumped up, but the chord itself hasn't changed. This has to do with the probability of following chords, which stand in relation to the preceding chords. Slide the slider down to find a more likely following chord for D. Right now we're looking for another D because we want to stay within a two-bar structure. As expected, the D can be found in the lower region of the slider. Let's see what the following chord of D would be by sliding the slider to the C-sharp minor chord in bar 5 and 6 all the way down. It's an E. As we can see, the B chord is still the most conventional following chord. And now that we found our way back to the last chord of our initial piece, let's see how the song sounds so far. I think perhaps we could alter the first bar of the B chord by changing it to a B sus. Let's try it out. Let's try changing the last chord to a dramatic B minor. But what about if we wanted to make a more dramatic change? Let's change the A major chord in bar 11 and 12 to an A minor. The following C sharp minor chord sounds a bit drastic. Let's slide the slider down to find a more conventional option. E minor should work.
good. That's exactly what I was going for. To continue our work in logic, we transfer our piece back to the sequencer. We do this by clicking Export MIDI File to save the file to the project folder. Then, we drag the MIDI file onto the tracks we are working with for a seamless integration into our existing composition. If this had been part of a larger composition, we would move the new MIDI regions right to the bar where they are needed. But in our case, we are looking for something that replaces our initial piece. So, let's delete the previous regions and move our new clips to bar 1. From here on, we can continue our work within the sequencer. To give you a quick review of what we have done, we will play the old and the new version in parallel. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for upcoming tutorials.